One of the most requested videos to date is to determine whether or not motor coat really works. Now the thing about motor coat that makes it different than a lot of the products we've tested in the past is it claims it's not an additive but rather a friction reducer. Now if there's one thing about each of the additives we've tested, most of them do claim that they reduce friction. Now why is this important? Well, if you want to improve the efficiency of an engine, the first thing you got to do is to reduce the friction. Also, if you want that engine to last longer, friction's a bad thing, so you want to get rid of that friction. So, does motor coat really reduce friction? We've got quite a few tests that will tell us once and for all whether or not motor coat really works or if it's just like some of the other products we've tested and can't quite live up to the claims it makes. So let's go and get the testing underway. So this is a safety data sheet from motor coat and unfortunately only about up to 1% of the contents are described on the safety data sheet. The other 99% isn't mentioned. I did look up the cast number online to determine what exactly these ingredients do. Most of the ingredients, most of them seem to be antioxidants of some sort. So how does motor coat handle heat? Well, it's really hard to say because it says the flash point is over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which doesn't really tell us what the max is. Boiling point, not tested. Not a whole lot of other information is provided. So we'll do a little bit of extra testing to determine how well motor coat handles both cold and hot temperature. So one of the best ways to determine whether or not motor coat can reduce friction is to compare it to 10W30 conventional oil. This is a lubricity tester I built a while back. I use it quite often. And actually motor coat uses a lubricity tester very much like this one. A little bit different design, but it has the same concept of a spinning wheel race and of course a bearing and they do the same type of test that I'll be doing, so I just want to compare results. Uh, there's a video on YouTube that demonstrates them doing a, a very similar test. Unlike a lot of the test equipment that's out there where there's the one-arm banded approach where someone's messing with the test device during the test, I won't do that. What I'm going to do is apply some motor coat to the wheel race as well as the bearing. I'm going to apply the weight, and we're going to run this machine for 30 seconds and see how much scoring is on the bearing compared to 10W30. We're going to test it at full strength and then we're going to mix it into some 10W30 to see if it helps reduce friction of the 10W30. The bearing with motor coat on it is to the right. The bearing with 10W30 is on the left. As you can see, there is a very, very small amount of scoring on the bearing that had motor coat on it. Very impressive. So this product also claims that water will not wash it away. So let's go ahead and test that claim. Since this product claims that water will not wash it away, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start off with a different bearing. I'm gonna coat it in motor coat. So the bearing is coated in motor coat. The race is coated in motor coat. I'm just gonna add some water. And we're going to run it for 30 seconds to see if the scoring increases. The bearing all the way to the right is one I just tested in water. As you can see, there is some additional damage or scoring to the bearing, but it's very, very minor. So the instructions call for two ounces per quart or heavy duty applications, three ounces per quart. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some oil with the maximum recommended amount of three ounces per quart. I'm gonna go ahead and add an ounce and a half of motor coat to 16 ounces of 10W30 conventional motor oil. So I find it interesting that the oil looks like it's changed color and it looks like it's sort of foggy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add 10W30 to this jar and I'm going to mix it up to see if we get the same result. So I'm not exactly sure why the color is changing, but apparently it's something to do with the contents or the ingredients that makes it the oil become foggy. All right, this is the 10W30 with motor coat. I'm just going to add a little bit and then test it. So the bearing all the way in the left is the one we just tested 1.5 parts of motor coat to 16 parts of 10W30 conventional oil. This is just 10W30 oil. As you can see, it really does help increase the film strength of the 10W30 oil.
So I've got some fresh 10W30 oil. So what I want to do is establish our baseline. I want to run this engine for about 15 minutes, see how many RPMs it's spinning. So this carburetor has been set up so the throttle plate won't move. It'll stay in the exact same position. So in theory, if there's reduced friction when we add the motor coat, the RPM should increase slightly. There's always a little bit of blow by in an engine, so what we're also going to look for is to see how the combustion chamber looks after we've ran this engine for an hour with motor coat, comparing it to regular 10W30 oil. So my objective is always to test the claims of the manufacturer. And the manufacturer here says that water will not wash this product away. There's a video on YouTube in which one of their product salespeople or engineers is showing a group of people how their product works. And this individual also says that water will not wash it away and the only way to remove the product is to sand it. Now here's the deal. Oil provides two main purposes. Number one, lubricate. Number two, oil is designed to dissipate heat. So water can do that job as far as dissipating the heat and the motor coat is still bonded to the metal parts so it's going to lubricate. So I've got this idea. Why not pre-treat this engine with a 50-50 mix of motor coat 10W30, drain off all the contents, fill the crankcase with water, and see if this engine will last for a solid hour with nothing but water in the crankcase. So we may have to stop the engine a couple times to add water to the crankcase because it's going to burn off because the crankcase temperatures will probably exceed the boiling point of water. But this will be an interesting test to see if the engine survives. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and drain off about half the contents of the crankcase and then I'm going to add the half that I've drained out. I'm going to replace it with motor coat. I'm going to pour the rest of the contents of the motor coat in this measuring cup. This holds 8 ounces when it's all the way to the top. We'll see how much I have left. Okay, this is about 7 ounces of motor coat. I'm going to measure out 16 ounces of water.
Okay, I'm checking out the cylinder wall, and the cylinder wall looks fairly dry. However, there is a little bit of a coating, a very slight coating that I can feel on the cylinder wall still. So it seems as though the motor coat did provide some protection beyond what motor oil would. Well, I have to admit, I'm pretty surprised the engine ran for an entire hour. What I want to do now is suck the sludge out of this engine. Then I'm going to put the motor coat, motor oil mix back inside the engine, run it for a few minutes, and then we'll run a compression test once the engine cools down. So this is what was in the crankcase before I drained it off and then added the motor coat, motor oil mix. So I allowed this to settle for 24 hours just because I wanted to see if anything separated out. And it does look like there's been some separation between, looks like some water and some sort of an engine sludge. So what I'm gonna do now is drain the crankcase of the lawnmower of the motor coat 10W30 mix. And we're gonna run both this as well as the, the what's in the crankcase now through a filter to see if there's any sort of metal contamination. This is the contents of the crankcase. I just drained it off and this is some thick sludgy stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of acetone to this mix so it'll flow through the filter very quickly. Otherwise, it'll take forever. Okay, I ended up using three different filters because it was taking forever for this sludge to pass through the filter. So this is the first filter. I'm not seeing a lot of metal in this one, just a little bit of maybe dirt contamination. This is the second filter. There is a very small amount of metal contamination, very, very fine amount. And this is the third filter. This is the filter that was used for the very bottom of the container. I'm not seeing a whole lot of metal inside these filters, which means there's not a lot of damage inside this engine as a result of using water in the crankcase. So it appears that motor coat provided adequate lubrication. So it comes to additives, I'm very skeptical of the claims they make, and when we tested motor coat today, it seemed to live up to both the claims it makes. The first claim is that it reduces internal friction. It appears to me that it does indeed reduce internal friction based on the lubricity test results. I was quite surprised to see how little scoring was on the bearing, probably the best to date, very close to best line. Also, it claims that water will not wash it away. Now, we tested on the lubricity device, but I wasn't satisfied with that. I wanted a longer term test. So we ran this engine for a solid hour with nothing but water in the crankcase after the engine was pre-treated with motor coat, motor oil mix. And as a result of that, the engine survived. We then drained the oil and I didn't find very much metal contamination at all. In fact, all I saw was a few pebbles of dirt, which I think I probably end up causing when I drain the oil. Some of the dirt probably came off the bottom of the engine and fell into the oil. The compression test remained solid. The engine was not overheating with water in the crankcase. So it appears that motor coat did indeed coat the metal components inside the engine and the engine lasted for a solid hour. I did have to add water a couple times. As you can expect, water flashes off pretty quickly inside of a hot engine. Anyway, I'm not sponsored by motor coat or any other additive or product manufacturer. I'm totally independent. I plan to keep it that way. You guys give me video test ideas and I test them. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.